Hey, Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas, a time of celebration, a time of family, a time of fried chicken. KFC may have just announced their gaming console, the KF console, but you see, before that, KFC has in fact made a video game, more specifically, a dating sim. I am not screwing with you here. They made a Colonel Sanders dating sim video game, and I figured, what better way to celebrate Christmas than to play this for you guys. For safety reasons, it's the first time ever that I am going to be away from family during holidays. So I went for the second best option, spending the holidays with Colonel Sanders. Now, before I begin, quick reminder, my merch currently is seeing a 10% discount if you type in the code YONGOUT2020 during checkout. This is a Christmas slash New Year promotion, so the offer lasts until December 31st, 2020. Every purchase goes a long way to supporting the channel and really grateful to everyone who's already bought merch. Uh, it's just been really great to see that endeavor take off. But back to the game itself, I'm gonna just boot it up. I've never played this before. I have no idea what I'm in store for. I've just seen some people talk about this and say that maybe I should give it a try. So, here we go. Oh my god. <laughs> This is so, um, anime. What? Oh, oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be real good. I love you, Colonel Sanders. A finger looking good <laughs> dating simulator. Oh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's do this. Before you get started, tell us your name. Yong of Yeah. Yong Von Yeah, maybe. Eh, either way. Love this loading screen. The biscuits and the, the drumsticks, of course. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. <laughs> Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Okay, all right, chicken. Chicken! Uh, smack that clock. Smash subscribe. Or I could throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever. Hell yeah. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Game over. Ha 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 ha. Wow, um, okay, so there are consequences. You know, this is player choice we're looking at here. Let's try that again. All right, so I gotta wake up. Makes sense, I suppose. <laughs> this game's off to a good start. All right, let's get through all this. Oh my god, that's so annoying. Smack that clock. Up and at him! Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Very original name, University of Cooking School. Your mind begins to wonder. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. You'll need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. I can daydream a little bit. Is that gonna lead to a game over because I daydream forever? And who is this? Is this some K-pop band? I feel like that that's what's going on here, maybe. Okay. Daydream a little bit. It's here, finally! Your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out of the door in a hurry. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up, those taste buds. You just had that lying around? Isn't it kind of stale from last night? Anyway. Yikes! You're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm gonna unlock the bad ending because of that one decision. Standing in the, in, in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. 
Oh boy. She's the most kawaii, awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Oh boy, where's this going? Good morning, young of ya! Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? The rest of our lives? Jeez, that's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am! Excited? A little nervous? Okay, okay. A lot nervous! What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but... Well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food! What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by master chef, chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you uh, rescued me from that quicksand box, as one does, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know! You're gonna do great! <laughs> <laughs> but if University of Cooking School Academy of Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up! What is up with Miriam's posy or why is she standing like that? A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss, oh my, that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. <laughs> sure, that's a thing that happens. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Let's, uh, you know, she's my best friend. We gotta comfort her. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet and she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. Oh boy. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating and you'll be uh, delighting the world with your heart heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all, and if not, at least I have these killer bangs! Yeah, yeah. Y yep, you, you got that going for you, for sure. Can you believe I cut them myself? I, I can, I can. You can definitely believe it. <laughs> I, uh, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Engravings! They offer no tactical advantage whatsoever. Hey! Oh, Sundarachan! It's. How do you pronounce that? It's. Aislach. I. Aislach. Aislach. Aiz. Oh my god. It's. Aislach, your arch-rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Oh, my. Yong of yeah. Uh, hello, Aislai. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Yong of Yeah's shins alone! They're perfectly normal shins! <laughs> Ugh, you can't stand Aislai. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. Oh, <laughs> okay. But she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. That's... That's way better for me. Okay, Ashley it is. Oh, okay, I, I, Ashley. Oh my god. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us! Goddamn right. We're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us! Bitch. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van, <laughs> Van Van the Man Man, has <laughs> has stopped to, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. Uh, his pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Oh wow, look at her face. Um, okay, she is evil. Ahem, Van Van. You rang, rang! Oh my god. What is this? This is, this is, uh, this is a cursed game. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. 
That is a JoJo character, without question. That is a JoJo character, if I've seen one. Hell, they're all posing like they would in JoJo. Look at, look at Miriam here. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think that just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. <sighs> Let's go, Miriam. Pshh! See you later, losers! You tell him, Miriam. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Okay, something popped. From Pop. Did he just fart? Is that what happened? Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. Oh, was, was that the sound of the door? Who knows anymore, honestly. These are questions I should stop asking. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you! I... Think you mean thank you? FBI, I swear! This kid is coming on to me, not the other way around, and I'm making it very clear that no. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> oh, Bob. Hi, Pop. I'm young of yeah. So, uh, are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I will not comment on rumors and speculation. I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Wow, look at <laughs> that's a lot of math going on for our ultimate goal of uh, delicious, crispy, buttery, uh, juicy fried chicken. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. Do not tell me that's my teacher. Okay, that's my teacher. A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Sprinkles. <laughs> of course, your name is Sprinkles and you're sitting on this majestic pillar. What kind of voice does this guy have? I feel like he's an older fellow. Look at the way he's, uh, he's got the reading glasses there. He's definitely like, up here. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL! God, I... What am I doing with my life? Aw, oh, man, that pose is cute. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect! Woof! What? A cute dog is our professor. This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Of course, of course. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Honestly, this is a very anime scenario. I'm not against it. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then. Oh boy. He walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him! It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland... Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog before he can finish his sentence. Wow, what voice. I need to give him a commanding, sexy voice. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. 
A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Uh, and this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> oh, nailed it. Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melt into a puddle and evaporate entirely. Ha 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 ha! Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. Ah! Look at her pose. She looks like she's going super sane. Ah! You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Besides, when young of here sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. She gets me. You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Oh, boy. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. All right. Okay, where's this going? Boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please, use my handkerchief. Oh, my God. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you? About how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? Hmm. How will you respond? I'm too mesmerized. I gotta take it. You stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful, you hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has his natural scent on it. A fried chicken of buttermilk batter. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world the birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, there might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Who's this nerd? Uh, hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue. You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Ah. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one word before I finish! Ruff. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness, tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> Buzzed. Where... The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal! Sprinkles walks into the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. I don't know how to feel about that. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart, but tough, is well known. Hmm, you decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Well, of course it has to be a chicken snack. This is KFC. This is Colonel Sanders we're talking about. He will appreciate this. And the goal, of course, is to win his Kokoro. All right, chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Nailed it. Well, 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 I think there is... I think there might be some competition for new star student. 
The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. All right. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Goddamn right, especially chicken. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, young of you, there's still a seat here. Colonel Sanders. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh boy, this is a tough choice. Best friend. Or Colonel freaking Sanders. I'm sorry, best friend. This is Colonel Sanders we're talking about. You cannot pass up this opportunity. Next time, next time, best friend. Oh, I feel like a dick. I really feel bad. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he bought he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Uh, thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can, and do the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Oh, you mean like a sense of pride and accomplishment? Yeah, I'm familiar with that. That's... Wow, so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, this time for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about me. <laughs> oh my God, this kid, this poor, poor kid. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for a life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. Oh boy, this is like an SAT question. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Oh, we all know washing our hands is extremely important. Looking at you, Pop. Yeah, looking at you, Pop. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Um, what night vision goggles? Okay, that's random. A slam dunk. Feather? That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? Oh, of course, a spork. I love chopsticks personally, but yeah, let's go with a spork. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. A pancake that looks like a silly face. Of course, you need that love in your uh, ingredients. That's right. Is, sp <laughs> is Sprinkles a good boy? He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy, damn right. That's right. Perfect score, five out of five. Your total score is... Hell yes. Wow, be honest. Did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you are. I, I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity yong of yeah. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria is, a nice, is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. Uh, yeah, no, this is, this is like no cafeteria I've ever been to. The Stewart Cafeteria, 2015. That's gotta be a reference to something. Alright, a delicious fragrance wafts, wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch! It smells crazy good! Okay, so she's not mad at me, that's good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. 
Uh, you see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh! Lunch! 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 She said shh! Frickin' pop, am I right, guys? In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smelled! Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. Not gonna lie, this is making me hungry. I kinda want fried chicken now. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. Huh, what a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude! Nah! I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison! <laughs> Got him! He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. <laughs> Look at his face. Uh, uh, uh. You wait to see what zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. Oh wow, she's had a change of mood. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Hey, lay off. I got dibs. Well, Van Van the Man Man. If you don't want any... I'll take his! Whoa, hold on! I, I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhalation and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates. Dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Oh, wow, okay, things just got real dramatic. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. All right, what do we do here? Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim toward the light. Hmm. You know, that light sure looks enticing. Hold on, can I save the game? Yeah, we got it. Oh, we can't save. We can load those. I hope there's autosave here. Let's swim towards that light, man. We gotta bask in this, uh, in this moment. Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. The flavors are so intense you become wrapped up in them. Unable to resist, you reach toward the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer, closer, until your fingertip connects with the end of everything. Wait, what? 
You are forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no yang of yeah now. There is only herbs and spices. Oh, this is game over, isn't it? Though Miriam tries to revive you, <laughs> she cannot. I literally died from the pleasure of eating Colonel Sanders fried chicken. Try again. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Let's try focusing and meditating and identifying every flavor. This is school, guys. We want to take this seriously. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Hmm. Salt, maybe? Pepper? Too obvious? Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but... There's something else. Something dark, something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 That got weird. Yes, even deeper still, until you find it. Could it be... He really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use... You try to go even deeper in the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you have traveled through space and time. Has anyone else died from this experience like I once did in another timeline? No? Okay. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one with Colonel Sanders. Gotta approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel Sanders, uh, I wondered if I could... Uh, uh, talk to you for a second? Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to come out and ask. What? 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 What is this? Where, where did this come from? Stop asking questions. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. Aww, you've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can tell. I use... It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow, you never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. 
Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. This guy is the kind to really go for it. He wants ambition. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. You know, about that, I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all those who taste it. You decide to show him that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do better? Have you ever heard of... Habanero peppers? <gasps> heard of them? I tend an entire garden of chili pepper varieties. Habanero, Poblano, Cayenne. But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. Okay, too much ambition, I pissed them off. A recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to. Let this be the last time you improvise on my recipes, Yong of Yeah. I'm headed back to class for the next lesson. Damn it! That certainly didn't go as planned. Can I reload? I want to reload. Let's reload. Let's go with a modest but thoughtful option. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I, I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery... It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Yong of Yeah. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we have only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. Oh my. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. Wow, that's a fancy looking kitchen over here. You step into the massive cooking arena, wow, where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally we get to show our stuff! Wait a second... Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. You're gonna be good, Miriam. You're good. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off! Okay. Ah, damn. I feel bad for Miriam, but... The star of the show is Colonel Sanders, you know? I gotta go with Colonel Sanders. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Oh man, I feel bad for Miriam. She looks just like a cool person. No, Miriam is crying now. Miriam, I'm so sorry. I'll be better in, in another timeline. Hey Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you. That wasn't clear. Wanna be my partner? Ah, oh, sure, young of yeah. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Oh no, Miriam. I feel like s such a piece of shit. Hello, new partner. Beep boop buzz. Yep, I'm pretty sure in this timeline when Yong of Ye dies, he will go to hell. Oh my! Two potential partners! I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose! It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Let's go with Clank, you know? Uh, uh oh man, I don't know. <laughs> These do not seem like two great choices. Let's, yeah, let's go with Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clang today. It's okay! I already ate! Two thumbs up. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. <laughs> See, this is why, you know, 
it's better to maybe go with Clank. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Hold on there, fella. You don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something Clank, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Well, there you go. See, I, at least I left her with a, a charming and earnest partner. Right, Miriam? We're still best friends? Okay, cool. Buzzed. Tissue? I hardly know you! <laughs> oh, so funny. Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. What have I done? <laughs> what have I done? Did I... Was I an unintentional wingman just now and set her up with... You know what? Whatever happens, happens. Now's the time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest your partner, Colonel Sanders? Hmm. Steak tartare. Uh, uh, using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Hell yeah, we gotta go with that. Yeah, I think he'll appreciate that, and I think that will inspire KFC's uh, mashed potatoes and gravy, <laughs> I guess. All right, let's do this. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could uh, make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? All right, he definitely seems to like this idea. And gravy. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll uh, go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? No! Psh. We're just cooking partners! God, mind your own business. Am I right, guys? Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off of my man. Did someone call for me? What is happening? Ugh, no! Jeez, Van Van! While I'm over here crushing Yong of Yaz's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Yong of Yao was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. Okay, I see how it is. Ashley, you trying to sabotage my shit here? You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Fan Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might be a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. You don't feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together. Like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Oh, you've done it now. You've pissed off the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Colonel Sanders. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel, if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Hmm. 
Okay, I can turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie, who always has your back. You know what? For this, I want to turn to Miriam. You turn to Miriam, and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need, Radar, is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them! I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. <sighs> leaving you in the dust vis-a-vis -vis my skill as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this competition, you're sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Yong of Ya is my partner for today's activity. Oh, causing some jealousy. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes in a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Ooh, oh my. That does look good. Anime food always just looks incredible. Man, gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Oh my. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. <laughs> the two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork full up. <laughs> this is so dumb. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork and mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Fan Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Yong of Yeah. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from whatever it lands. Wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes, face? Van Man rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Wait, what? Is that an axe? Again, whatever. Let's stop questioning things. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Planted on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. Uh oh. That is not gonna end well. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. I uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him. It literally freaking killed him. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. 
Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. Saved by the bell. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kind. <laughs> Sure. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. <laughs> Basically, I'm too old for this shit. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Ooh, spooky. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. Mm. What? Like for real? Oh, come on. Ooh, spooky. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. Oh boy, here we go. Classic visual novel moment. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I, I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Um, Colonel Sanders? Yes? Young of yeah? There's, uh, something I need to tell you. Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first! Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world had ever seen, has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working toward that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. That's beautiful. Ooh. Hey! No! I... You... you sh shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? Y you can prove that! I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. <laughs> Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. I have no words. The Spark Monster is here to fight a hero! <gasps> I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be very afraid of me! Because I'm a monster! See? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. For real? What will you do? <laughs> the menu, oh my god. 10 out of 10. Game of the year, game of the millennium, game of life's history. We got attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? 
Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upsets Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Okay, we gotta keep attacking. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Everyone will remember that. Spork Monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Goddamn right. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? We gotta defend for this one. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You hold your head between your hands and mutter, This is not happening. This is not happening. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork Monster uses utilitensi- Oh my god, kill me. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. We gotta attack now. You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love. Spork Monster's oozing cheese saws onto the lawn of the squad of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. It is gonna suck for whoever has to. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded Edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot Pie Power Pinch! Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. You know what? Hanging out with Colonel Sanders has taught me... Has taught me that there is good in all of us. That we should be merciful. That we should be the, the, the better person. Let's spare this wretched beast. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! And don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. Yong out! I won't forget this! And I certainly won't be back like you said! The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Because why not? You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle bus, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Oh, oh boy. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Yeah, this is my room. How do you get in my house? I guess I had my keys on me or something. How, how'd you know my address? Doesn't matter. Because we are with Colonel Sanders. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. You know, that's not the weirdest dream I've had, to be fair. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? 
it's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be um. I think I might like Clank. <laughs> I set them up. I set her up. I set her up with a machine. You know what? I'm happy that Miriam is happy because she's my bestie. Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. Rule 34 has certainly already been on top of this. We got to talking after class, and he's actually like a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in high school? I don't doubt it. No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to, and was also the convertible that he... Wait, what? And was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. Stop thinking about this logically, Young. All right. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy of Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. Oh my. <laughs> you sure did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you? I guess. Yeah, I guess. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that, a secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So, this summer, while, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. <sighs> Please, Miriam. Don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with him and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of uh, spices here. Oh boy. Hold on, is the implication here that Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please! It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret, or share it with your bestie? You know, if it's... if it's a secret, I just... even among best friends, I like to not disclose those secrets, so... I'm actually... gonna have some integrity here. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was, uh, um... Eye of Newt! Uh, I, I know it sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but... What can you do? Eye of Newt! Wow! Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. Okay, so good thing I kept that secret. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. 
That can only mean one thing. What? Okay, game. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. <laughs> Stand back and admire his majestic glory. Run to him! Of course. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel! My Colonel! However, your stubborn movements surprise the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. Cool. Is that game over? The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, oh boy, what? In the darkness, you see a vision. <laughs> oh my god! Ghost of student. Ooh, young of yeah, I am here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. Ooh, I have been trapped in a realm beyond the Shadow Realm. But a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. Damn it! I'm legit curious as to what his name is. Aw, jeez! You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is it that just his natural season musk? Or is that just his natural season musk? Oh god! Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. It's, it's, that's, things are moving too fast for, for... Yeah. Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school. And maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure. That Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has uh, beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. Alright folks, I'm about halfway through this game now, and... I think you guys have a solid idea for what this game is. Um... Well, that was... Interesting. I wonder if there's a sequel that'll be a first-party exclusive for the KF console. Anyway, jokes aside, I don't know, I figured I'd do something silly for Christmas. I hope you had as much fun as I did playing that. I don't... I, I can't put into words what the... F I, so there you have it, folks, a history lesson on the origin story of KFC. It all happened exactly as displayed in this game, which is not just a visual novel, it's a visual history book, and the story's told just mwah, beautifully with pinpoint accuracy as to the exact moment-to-moment -moment events. What a masterful game, a masterpiece outright. The fact that this wasn't nominated way back when, uh, when it, whenever it launched, it's a travesty. So, 11 out of 10. Thank you for tuning in, folks. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. I hope your holidays are well spent. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Yong out.